Let me just start out by saying this is going to be one of those episodes where I really want to say we got a lot done. Or like, here's what we're doing today. But unfortunately, not every Kenshi play session can go like this. For the most part, this was a miserable day of struggling. And before I begin, let me just say I spent around twice as long recording and playing as I normally do to make this episode. But at the very least, I can promise you that by the end of this video, you won't really be that impressed. Either way, there are still some jokes. You know, you got your boy Croc hosting an episode. So prepare yourself, grab some popcorn or a hash pipe, and strap yourself in for a series of miserable events. Up to this point, We've been doing great like in the first 30 days we got over a dozen people recruited into our gang we're now set up shop in the stand desert but this is our very first criminal headquarters and so far it's lacking a lot of necessities we got attacked by Shex at the end of the last video so now we are recovering we had a few people who lost limbs so we'll need to go out and buy some and that's going to be our first course of action today so we went to a way station but didn't seem like there's any robotics there so it was off to the next one which was way farther now i want you guys to keep the scenario in mind the scenario of you know me trying to do something and then having to do something completely different because the plans fuck up we're on day 36 so i'm hoping to find the limbs and then find a skeleton repair bed because i really need to heal all my skeletons on day 37 the skeletons got into a fight with a pretty big group of dust bandits but the dust bandits aren't that huge of a deal all of them have stats that are like under level 20 so they aren't nearly as much of a problem as their sheks are and even with finding a second group it wouldn't really phase the gangsters at all just a lot of free experience waiting to be claimed. The only downside is that most of the dust bandit loot isn't worth a whole lot of cats so we don't get much money from these battles. Now eventually the skeleton gangsters arrived at the way station and went right into the mechanic shop to buy Panera Tan a new leg. And then we went to go use the skeleton repair bed. Now I brought all of our skeletons out here so each of them could use the bed but when I tried to use it I couldn't because there wasn't enough power. So even though we were able to buy a leg we were still stuck with a problem that everyone still needed to be healed. I mean what kind of poverty ridden shit is this dude? The dude is so chainsaw arms, but he doesn't have a battery or like a, you know, a wind generator, a little fan set up. So I looked into it briefly and not very long as you'll see. And I figured out I need two books to research for skeleton repair beds. They're special books, so I sold a bunch of stuff to get enough money for two ancient science books. I figured we'd just build the skeleton repair bed back of the base, so I sent all the skeletons back to Bad Guy City. And while we don't have much of the stuff researched yet, I decided to set up some bear training equipment. Just some basic training dummies, a thief box, a couple law picking boxes, as well as a couple dexterity pools. Now before our skeletons were all back at Bad Guy City, the Sheks arrived for another battle. So majority of these humans and like fleshy gangsters just started to bleed out left and right. Meanwhile, the skeletons arrived just in time at the end, but they still didn't really do too much they weren't able to take down the shecks either at very least we were killing our fair share of them like the shecks would leave and have to go back home to heal because we killed half our group now we currently have two normal beds for healing and no skeleton repair bed so my next mission for the gang is obviously going to be to get a repair bed set up but unfortunately those science books i bought are useless as we need engineering research for the tech to unlock the beds not ancient science books silly croc so as i was waiting for everybody to heal up a different group of shecks arrived fuckers we had to fight all of them but with everybody here at the same time we really didn't do too bad we still didn't end up winning but thankfully the group fought hard enough so by the end of a battle a majority of the shecks were knocked out or dead and even though the group didn't win this battle they still took down even more than half of the shecks they basically took out most of them this time they're all knocked out or dead the remaining few that were still alive would flee back home leaving us a bunch of planks and weapons to loot they all sell for around 1k cats making it a good side hustle after battles but we now had to wait even longer now as everyone was injured again and with no repair beds it was going to be a long wait for our limbs to heal so while waiting i decided b01 would go to squin so we could sell some loot and then buy some materials and books we needed i realized we had no iron refinery set up so i laid down the blueprints at our city for one and this is when i realized izumi must have died as she wasn't left in heft only Brittany ears was so this meant we had now achieved our first death of a series Woo! pat on the back guys but we were down a researcher which sucks and moves us back in progress so I had to move on with life either way. 
Looks like some storage bins for the iron operation. FMB-01 was going to head out back to Squin with a full backpack of copper. And I would have him hold a body. That way he could at least train some strength experience. You know, get at least one thing done this video. Once he arrived and sold all of his copper, we began to look for some new mercenaries. Since we're having a pretty hard time with wild checks, B-01's found some Hiver mercs for hire. We set them to 24 days. That way the outpost would now at least have some protection for a few weeks. On top of that, we then found someone named Blade Dancer who was highly skilled in offering herself as a solo bodyguard. For 9k cats, I was able to recruit them into our gang, and I renamed him to Toro. He has high stats, like in the 50s and 60s, and currently maining katanas. So Toro will be like the ninja who bodyguards B-01 as he travels to the grid now in search of engineering research. The first battle they got into when they entered the swamp ended really well. I mean, each of them just did one hit each, and they knocked down the swamp person. They'll make a fantastic team and B-01 will be able to explore without being left stranded if he gets stuck into a coma. They still aren't a match for a group of around, you know, 20 swamp people, but they still managed to hold their own and take down quite a few. It was now day 42, and both of them entered the grid in search of a complex. Now, this isn't too hard to find since the grid isn't very big. We arrive at a complex, but get this, we don't have a lockpicking skills required to even attempt breaking into the chest. Strength wouldn't work either. And without tools, we were basically screwed. We could find a few things there, but basically fuck all worth coming out here for. So we would have to head out of the grid empty-handed and come back once we have some lockpicking skills. Both of them would make it back to Bad Guy City the next day, just in time for a Sheck group to arrive. It was like the third time they were fighting us in this video, isn't that nuts? This time though, our group did prove we were getting stronger at least, as we had a few people get knocked out, but a majority of the gangsters were able to beat the Sheks. This gave us a lot more weapons to loot and eventually sell. So B-01 and Toro filled their bags up and headed over to Squin. Now while we were in Squin selling loot and kicking dirt or something, some settlers arrived to Bad Guy City. We were seeking refuge and in exchange we would help defend the city against people like Basheks. So I decided to take them in. We needed normal citizens after all, in between all the criminal activities we had going on. Now this has nothing to do with progress, but I did notice since B-01 has a lamp, it kind of looks like a dick. I mean, like look at it bro. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. Should I remove a Robocock or should I let it hang? Now since the shop in Heft had engineering research for sale at 8k each, I figured I'd make the money and then buy two of them. It was supposed to be simple. Brittany Ears could go buy them, bring it to a research bench, we could research it, and then bam, we would have it. But when I checked on Brittany Ears, she was fucking glitched onto the wall. I tried for like a few minutes. I tried looking for a way down and a way out, but there was just none. The stairs, the fucking stairs that they had there, they were blocked from exiting or entering you couldn't move by the like bottom of them so now we were stuck and screwed and there's no one else in heft so i wasn't gonna run somebody up to half i would take forever i'd have to save reset squad positions and then send britney ears to bad guy city so this means we saved Britney Ears, but the Heft Copper Dream is now dead. We also didn't get the engineering research we've been looking for like the entire video, so that screwed us as well. We now had to make a mission to find a new place to buy it from. I know I can go to Heft, but that's like literally across the map. I'd like to go somewhere a bit closer. I sent B-01 and Toro over to the Sheck City called Hope, and man, there is not that much hope there. Thank you, thank you. You can follow me on YouTube and socials in the description below. I'm here all night. This place was pretty poor, and it didn't really have what we needed, so it was off to the next town. I sent them to New Kralia, but this was just a shit outpost, so we left and went back home. I wanted Toro to train on lockpicking while B-01 was traveling and did some strength training. So since Toro was no longer bodyguarding B-01, the gangster Zagan would accompany B-01 throughout Squin and into the swamp. This was getting B-01 strength well into the 50s, which was fantastic. And it took a long time, but eventually they would end up arriving in the swamp city a shark. And sure enough, the shop the one shop we need to get into, it's blocked by a tree or something. Like, you can't even get in there. Who the fuck put this tree here? Why is there a tree here? Why? The hell, man? Like, I was getting so genuinely upset, even, like, recording right now. I'm like, why? Who put the tree there? I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, this is gonna be a bad episode. I already wasted hours. I ain't getting shit done. I'm in a swamp right now. It's so laggy. It's just a miserable time. I decided it'd be time to send B-01 back home and just say, fuck it. This isn't gonna be the episode where we get anything done okay this isn't a pillar for progress in our series b01 and zagan then got into a fight with some dust bandits which slowed them down a lot this used the last bit of b01's med kit 
So he would carry Zagan into Squin, and once he sold all the copper he had, he had around 55 strength levels. This gave B01 enough money to buy a new repair kit, and then when the two got back home, they made it just in time for a Dust Bandit raid. Now, while we weren't getting what we wanted done, we still made great progress in some other ways. We're still one step closer to becoming the strongest gang in Kenshi, so that's where I'm going to end this episode. If you liked what you saw, remember to subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like the video, sacrifice a goat, and comment on the video to help my channel grow. I really appreciate all the support on the series, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.